waiting on John. All right. Welcome, everybody. We do have a quorum here. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, we need to approve uh, the agenda. Like, the consent agenda. The consent agenda, anyway, yes. So okay. just a motion to, to approve the consent agenda? Most second. Okay. Motion second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And general patron input, there is none. none. All right. So we will not do general patron input then. <laughs> so moving on, we have the GCEA report. Or we may not. I don't see him here. All right. We're going to set a record today. <laughs> All right. Uh, Perter report. Okay. We were fortunate enough to have a joint meeting, and uh, we had an individual named Christian White that made a presentation of a senior project. He's in auto class, and he did uh, what I thought was an excellent job. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, he made an excellent job of uh, presentation. He replaced the engine in a Subaru, and it actually got out and went down the road. <laughs> Woods uh, presented the idea of a grant to help uh, with us doing something with Highway 16. Uh, we talked about that for a while. Uh, the chair, uh, Mr. Fain, presented a plan for an online exploratory virtual school for students in the sixth to eighth grade. Uh, Emmett High School or Emmett School District is looking to offer electives to students next year. Much discussion was made over the four to five day conversion and how that's going to, to work. Uh, after the joint meeting, PERTA had its regular board meeting and Tessa Hubert, which is the Ag Science, gave a report on, on uh, the activities of uh, the students. And uh, some of them are going to national and it, it, it's quite an impressive thing what the kids are doing. Um, John Lindsay is the automotive teacher and of course, he piggybacked on uh, uh, Christian White's presentation. <laughs> and if you people haven't been out there to see what uh, is in the auto shop, it's impressive. They've got uh, uh, they've got up to date equipment, um, stuff that uh, the kids would go out in the industry and and uh, work with. They have a hands on experience right here in their own backyard to get ready for that. Uh, the board meeting tomorrow will include reports from Robert uh, Sansbury, which is an engineering uh, teacher, and uh, Susan Sansbury, which is graphic arts. And we'll get an update on the online in-person middle school exploratory class. And that's my report. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any questions? <coughs> uh, thank you, sir. We'll move on to our superintendent report. Uh, most of you have had a chance to read through this. Just a couple. I'm just going to hit a couple key points with the intersection closure of 12th and substation. Today was our first day with it. It was not pretty across the board, but it wasn't wasn't all our fault. It was actually transportation, uh, you know, just the the roads being blocked off correctly. Um, that we've we've got to expect at least the next two weeks of the set of that intersection being completely closed, probably three. Um, but it'll get better as parents see or figure out what needs to be done. Um, our admin, you know, we've started our job hiring process. We are seeing more apps this year than we have in the past few years. Not saying it's four day related, but you know, a lot of, you know, we've got seven apps, I think in for the, uh, AD position. Um, no, now there's 10 apps. So it's wow. gone up. So we're seeing a lot of applications come through. ISAT testing starts this month for grades three through 11. So we'll hopefully have some updates in May of kind of some of our preliminaries. Um, ELA starts, I believe, usually mid-month towards the end of the month for those grades with math followed in early May. So we may not get those results till June. Um, Black Canyon High School, please put this on your calendar. Uh, graduation is May 23rd at 630. And that will be at Emmett Middle School. And Emmett High School graduation is May 24th at 7 p.m. That'll be rain or shine outside. Uh, <laughs> The Emmett High School Bleacher Project was partially funded by a local donation supporting uh, supporting the bringing back the high school graduation. The cost to the district for the that project was one hundred sixty one thousand five hundred fifty one dollars, 
and 66 cents. So that's how much the district put out for that project. And then there was a donation of 100,000 to complete that. Um, there's a little bit more sidewalk um, concrete to be laid um, in the next, hopefully before graduation. <laughs> Curriculum updates, we're working with ELA and math from Boise State on bringing them in this summer to work with our with teams and then all, all the way through the next year. Um, the spring newsletter should have got, should be going out this week, so you should receive a newsletter from the Emmett School District this week in the mail to every, um, every address in Jim County. Our math pilot, we have um, the two companies, um, for middle schools on the back white table and the high schools up here, some samples for you to look at. They've been piloting those. The team's going to meet April 26th to make a final decision and recommendation that we'll bring to the board in May. Uh, they'll bring it in May. Let me see February 8th closure. We have um, one more day is April 19th will be an extended day for secondary students. That'll be the last Friday. Um, Carberry will be bringing to us, hopefully in May, um, seeking approval to put a reader board up, an electronic reader board in, in place. Um, I said, make sure we have all our ducks in a row before we bring it, which includes the electrical piece. And then the middle school will be presenting a project in May to build a Gaga, how do you say? Gaga ball court, and I don't know what it is, um, but she's. Um, if you have questions about it, I guess the kids played it at the YMCA um, camp and love it. So do you want to kind of give a, do you mind? So, no, it's um, so it's a circular kind of. Oh, so it's you don't have to stand up, but it'd be nice. Circular um, dodgeball or uh, not dodgeball, yeah, um, dodgeball kind of game. Um, and the kids went to the YMCA, uh, YMCA camp last year, absolutely loved it. Um, and so we looked at um, how to bring it to our school, and we have some money that they fundraised. Um, a year before I came, it's just been sitting in a in a big camp meeting to be spent on something like this. Okay, and I wasn't sure what it was, but they'll bring that once they have all the the costs to the board for hopefully approval. Um, legislative session, they are currently in recess, um, waiting till Wednesday, waiting for the governor to sign the, the rest of the education bills. Um, governor did sign 521, which is school modernization fund. There's some details that we still don't know yet. What does the 10-year plan have to look like? What does your project look like? Um, but we're hoping to get that clarified in the next few weeks. So in May, we can kind of give you some of the details or no later than June. House Bill um, 766 is the trailer bill on that one. That is the one that kind of redefines that four- and five-day language. And so that's what we kind of gambled on that was kind of coming down. And, and we'll know more as the state board meets and talks about what they think will be the minimum hours and or minimum days moving forward. District academics, again, SATs are starting. And then if you did, if you had a chance, we have the EMS course handbook and the EHS one, so that gives you an idea of what's required. What they're, They've finished registration for the middle school yesterday, and I believe the high school last week they finished. So they're just starting to work on um, what that scheduling will look like. Um, ICEP data is still there, the same data as 2024, our map March, and then our target data is the same as well. A lot of district maintenance updates. They brought in the fire suppression um, to look at those lines if we have to, you know, they get those leaks because they're dry lines. So they, the moisture in them rusts through. So they, they've gone through, they've inspected the ones that need to be replaced, and they're setting that up for um, replacement this spring, late spring and early summer. Um, weight room removal of the walls and the HVAC system is going to start June 1st with a finalization date by August 1st by Wright Brothers Construction. Um, we've been spraying our fields, all that um, kind of things for abatement. Uh, text beginning the installation of the public PA system and suite is actually almost 90% done. You got a couple speakers you said has, he has to put outside and that'll be done. And then you have the request for qualifications for work on the football field. As an action item later, this this uh, in this agenda, and then this is just that the plan on routes for a Carberry, and so I just attached that. This has been sent out to parents and staff and community quite a bit. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Woods? All right. Thank you. Moving on, Crystal. We have our uh, budget review. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. 
Um, so you had asked about audit information last month. I did some checking. I was able to look up uh, surrounding districts online and find out who they used. The majority of them use Quest CPAs, which is who we have. There were some that used um, a couple of other vendors. Um, I also did a search online to see exactly what our options were in the Valley. <clears throat> Most of them, it did not appear, would do school audits. They are a little unique, have special requirements. Um, so I called the ones that look like, well, they were also the ones that other school districts used. So I had called them to find out if they would give us a quote. They were not willing to give us an official quote unless we could tell them, yes, we want to move to someone else next year. Give us an official quote. Um, because it does require additional information. They did give me an unofficial quote for a the base price of an audit. Um, now, because we're a school district, if we spend 750000 or more in our federal funds, it requires a single audit, which is an additional um, piece of work that has to be done. And so they charge extra for that. Um, if we have more than one major fund, they charge extra for that. So it just would take us a little bit to gather all the information and then to get it together and, and give us a quote. But their base quote um, was 35000 and 16000 so it is a little bit more than what we currently pay. Um, however, if you would like me to um, proceed with that, just let me know and I will contact them. I did tell them that if the board had made a decision that they would like to get an official quote, that I would contact them at a later time, a little bit closer to next year's um, audit. Um, let's see, and then the budget hearing. We also need to make a decision for that. I um, included a calendar, which I thought might kind of help you see the options. The July board meeting date is the marker that the state uses. So if we start with that one, currently our um, July board meeting is set for July 15th. And so we have um, the hearing or the, the newspaper notice that needs to go 10 days prior. And then you've got the um, hearing date, which is at the latest 28 days prior to the June board meeting. So we could have our hearing on the 17th or before our um, June board meeting is currently set for June 10th. So that is an option as well. But we do have to let the county know, the newspaper, uh, or the county know, April 30th. So we'll, if you guys can make a decision later tonight, that would be great. Um, so then if we move on through and look at our revenue, not a lot going on at this point. Um, we received our February base payment. We won't get another state base payment until May. Um, so outside of that, we're receiving some of our special funds, such as our technology, we receive that. Um, it's not in our general fund, but um, as far as our general fund payments, we won't see a lot until that May payment. And we should also know then a little bit more about some of the um, extra funds that the state has um, put in this year's budget. We look at general fund expenses. We are set currently at 60% in our salaries, which is a little bit low. And I didn't finish that with what the norm is. Um, but it is a little bit lower, and part of that is due to the Medicaid. And so I want to take just a second to kind of explain the Medicaid. Um, I know that there's a bit of a misconception of how that actually works. We do not receive dollar for dollar. So we don't say, hey, we have these staff members billing Medicaid, and we receive that much in Medicaid. It is actually uh, reimbursed only when there is a billable service going on and they reimburse for that short time that that service is occurring. So it is not a full day of school. It is not while they're at lunch, at recess, any of that is why that, while that service is actually going on. Um, it is a reimbursement rate that is set by Medicaid and it actually depends on whether it is a certified staff, a classified staff, an occupational therapist. Um, the rates are all different and it depends. Is it an individual student? Are they doing it as a group? Sometimes there is not enough time to do an individual student and they put a couple of students together. Our rate is lower because it's a group. 
So trying to estimate Medicaid reimbursement is pretty much impossible. Um, <laughs> last year, we had an exceptional year. We received a very high reimbursement. Uh, this year, um, our reimbursement is anticipated to be lower than that. So we are likely going to have staff that we have put in the Medicaid funds um, that we originally anticipated we re would receive the uh, reimbursement for. Because there is not going to be that large amount of reimbursement, the staff are sitting in Medicaid. So you will see um, lines become overspent. And if you look in the general fund, you might see where there are some lines that are underspent. That money is sitting there because we will have to shift Medicaid overspend into the general fund. You cannot overspend Medicaid. You cannot underspend. It has to be a zero balance at the end of the year. So we have to plan for some shifting. So that kind of um, is why our salary percent is a little bit lower because we've not spent some of that Medicaid money. It's just sitting there waiting to the end of the year. And hopefully that makes sense. No. No. <laughs> Medicaid is all kinds of fun. Um, yeah, I would, I'd be glad to explain it later. Well, I went through it a little bit and I, I, we, I didn't have time today, but I'll, I'll make time in the future. Yeah. Um, let's see. Our March expenses included uh, view of view roof section repair and water heater replacement. Older water heater is replaced. And on levy, we've just begun the prep work for Shadow Butte. So you will see some um, expenses start to go in there. And it is mainly uh, the architectural, the placing the um, notices um, and their work on getting the bids and the, the specs out. And that is all I have. Right. Thank you. So then in the way of clarification, so last month as an action item, we already gave you permission to move forward with Quest. We just asked for due diligence to show the community that we weren't overspending. I don't feel the need to ask you to do any more due diligence. Does anybody else? Well, I just assume we'll move forward with yeah. where we're at. You, you've shown we're doing as well as we can with our funds and Quest has done a good job. So I appreciate you making the phone calls too. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Crystal? Thank you very much. All right, uh, bills. Oh. <clears throat> Would typically be Mr. Brady. I got a chance to look through them pretty good. I don't know who else did. I looked, I, I looked today. through them pretty closely. I, I had. I, I do have a, a question. General question, but I have to find it. Okay, we'll let Ronnie go first then. So um, I see that we, we had uh, some maintenance done at the middle school on removing some brush and, and filling in the field lines and. And, and whatnot and um and then i saw a line expenditure for 1300 dollars for spraying and uh then if you go down farther we see another line expenditure of like 6500 dollars for spray so um my question is is why we're paying somebody to to spray that do you want me to answer yeah absolutely yeah. This, yes <clears throat> it's okay so that was me or mr we or uh mr weeks um Last summer we had we had quite of a quite a discussion online with uh, punctures and stickers and some of those things. Um, we chemigated uh, the high school around the track, uh, around the visitor stands, everywhere we could uh, with uh, with a new chemical. And the chemical was uh, was a uh, restricted use pesticide. It's fifteen hundred bucks for a gallon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's less than an ounce per per gallon of water. And it's something that we couldn't spray, we couldn't purchase, and we couldn't chemigate because of our applicator license. Of license. I used to have it, but uh, yeah. it's expired. Um, and from what I understand <laughs> from our from our research and uh, talking with those that are using it, it is an expense up front for the first three years. And beyond that, the residual hopefully will, will help us with it. Um, and as far as the spray tanks, those are purchased after the fact, um, so we could do these things in yeah, the future. future. We will have to get somebody certified as a restricted use handler in <clears throat> him if we're going to save that money. But when you go over to buy from Simplot, uh, from Ag, Simplot Ag uh, purchases, 
Kimba, you know, yeah. know as much about yeah. that as yeah. 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 Well, that, that, so, Mr. Chair, that was my question. So we do not have a certified applicator right not. now. not. So, so to protect us and to, yeah, yeah. to restrict it and to, to part, you know, we, we got uh, the reentry was, was 48 hours. That's that's the use of it. And uh, to do all those things, um, yeah, we needed, uh, and that was Parker. We asked Parker Myers to do it. Yeah. And, uh and plus, he gets quite a discount on it. Um, and, and besides that, we, we couldn't use, uh, you know, the, the full gallon of chemical in, in a year. And that's 1500 bucks we'd have setting up yeah. until the next year. And, you know, the, the date it uh, expires, everything else when you're, when you're buying that to chemical. So that was the reason. But in the future, we're going to have to have somebody that is, uh, that is uh, certified as a handler and an applicator here. And that, I mean, that's a great explanation. I just want the community to hear and understand that. I mean, because there is there's quite a risk if you're even if you have use of it, it's quite a risk to applicate something that you don't have a license for. I mean, they could really crack down on us. So, I mean, I just want the community to know and understand that. So and if that's the reason. And that was one of my first goals when we got here last fall. When I, we, we, we got all of those uh, complaints online and everything is is. One, to find somebody to come in and do that small of an area for you that is a commercial applicator, they'd laugh you off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we will. We'll, we'll get that stuff taken care of. It's in the plan. It's our vision to take care of our own facilities. That's why we bought the tanks. That's why we got the uh, side by side. That's stuff that we've never had before. Yep. So, All right. We're headed in the right direction. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Um, Science. The, the salmon services was for a, a Add a wall to additional office space. What just the question is where where is that additional office? It's, it's space? in the district office. In the district. Office. And that where the second set of um, uh, where the second uh, receptionist area was. Now there's a wall across. Okay. And is that the one that said the last payment or whatever? Mm -mm. It doesn't say. No, that's just a wall. The last, office. last payment was. Last payment on what's good. It's. Okay. No, that was my only question. Yeah. Any other questions or comments regarding the bills? So I would entertain a motion to present the bill or approve the bills as presented. I, I did not see anything. Yet. So, Mr. Weeks, motion. Mr. Jones, second. All right. Any further discussion on the bills? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Uh, informational hey, can item. Can I ask a question in regards to that section of. of um, uh, the principles presentations. Hmm. You principals out there, can you give me an idea of the participation that you had in the parent teachers uh, conferences? Ninety six percent at Carberry, ninety seven in the fall. Okay, thank at you. High school. Yeah, we're going to. It might be generous for me to say ten percent. <laughs> Did you give me pizza or anything? I mean, I, you may not want to hear this, but I do. My theory is, is that you know we're operating like we were 50 years ago, and parents had to come in to find out how their children were doing at the high school. Whereas now they can see it online, they can email the teacher. I mean, there's just tons of communication that's going back and forth that doesn't require the parent to come in. I mean, that ten percent could probably be because half the teacher said, "I'll give you, I'll give your kid extra credit if you come and see me." My goodness! So, do so you think maybe we should rethink parent teachers' nights? It's just my opinion. You guys can uh, <laughs> make your own decision. I have no evidence to back up what I said, but that's just my opinion. Okay. So, keep that in mind for a future agenda item. Um. Any other questions on that, Mr. Jones? Sure. All right. Uh, and that in case, moving on to informational items, we have classified hires, transfers, and resignations. Uh, as you have the list up here, we have the one resignation of the bus driver. We have the transfer um, from bus driver to transportation supervisor that will take effect in July. And I have that one as a separate item, just as informational. And then the new hires, we have assistant cook, JV tennis coach. And in these work-based learning experience, these are the three students that went through the application process that um, Ms. Thomas talked about last month. And so they have been hired, and I'm not sure where, do you, do you know where they're going to be working? Um, they have a placement at a new store and oh. with um, ADM. 
Okay. Thank you. Any questions on that? All right. Uh, the monthly building and department updates. Just those are the ones that we attach from each of our departments. If you have any questions for one of the principals or anything from what we have, just, there's a lot of things going on in each of those. If there's something you want to attend, um, please just reach out to the principals. Uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, I appreciate Shadow Butte's uh, calendar. It gives me an idea of what's going on with the school, and you're the only one that seems to do it. Maybe some of the others might want to piggyback off your thoughts, but uh, thank you for that. Keep me organized, too. <laughs> you see our calendar in the newsletter? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was just going to say I really appreciate the time and effort that goes into it, and I also appreciate uh, attaching the newsletters. Yeah. That's, that's helpful. Very helpful. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments, questions on uh, Bill's department <laughs> updates? We do appreciate the time that you guys put into those updates for us. Uh, moving on, transportation director. So I just wanted to separate this out, even though it's on the uh, transfers and resignations, but we um, interviewed three qualified applicants last Thursday, um, and um, the committee was in consensus to hire Ben Bennett, who is sitting here in the front row. Um, we'll take over as a transportation supervisor for Shauna in July. We'll do some trainings um, with Shauna over the next few months or May and June to kind of get him ready for that. And, um, he comes to us with a lot of experience out of HP. He's been driving bus for us since 2013, so just a little over a year, two years now? A year, year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. So um, we're excited to have him and moving forward with that. So. You can ask him a question if you want. And he's probably not ready for one, but uh, oh, congrats. I just wanted to separate it out. Yeah, so. Glad to have you. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then uh, so from that one, we've got the five-day to four-day calendar monthly update. Yeah. Um, through our retreat, we talked about just putting a monthly update of some of the things we've been talking about. Um, our goal is to provide a monthly working update, our content curriculum. Um, working And again, you'll see some of this within my superintendent report. Um, special education transition as we move forward on that, the seven period schedule. Um, we, we, you will see policy next month. Um, there's a, there's quite a bit of policy that we have in our, in the district that has the, um, five day school week that's in it. So we want to look at some uh, changes there. One that's really, truly not related to the four day, but the, the transition to a seven period day means that we have to look at our graduation requirements for the incoming freshmen and move it from 48 down to 46. All core classes, all required classes are still the same. It's just two fewer electives that they'll need to, to graduate because that class won't have the opportunity. With an eight-period day, you have 16, 16 credits within a school year. On a seven-period day, they only have the opportunity for 14. So that's that's the reason for that. And so we'll start bringing – we'll bring the, the first draft of most of those um, – in May, and there'll be quite a few of them to look at. There, there's minimal changes on that, but we just want to make sure we catch that. So, um, PD days, we're going to be working on the 8th and 9th with all of our staff, um, certified staff. Uh, we have Weezer's going to work, help us bring some teachers over to talk to our teachers about what to think about moving to a four day. Um, bell schedule proposals, we have that, uh, a change in that. Um, and again, as you look at the bell schedule change, we went from 1,032 hours at the middle school to just over 1,000. I think it's 1,002, um, but it's well over what is required by the state with the, the state minimums 930 for middle school students. So give it to uh, provide the older siblings a chance to be with their younger siblings. Some of the things we need to consider is class time is sacred, gym space for after school activities. Staffing hours and calendar days. What is our substitute pay going to look like on a four-day versus five-day? Personal days on Friday. Are we going to? Um, are we when we have those Fridays? Are we going to allow staff to take those as personal days? Are we going to make those sacred days for training? Um, community events on school days. Who's going to cover it? So we've got a lot of things still to talk about. Some opportunities. Jim County Rec District is working on some things for Friday. We, um, Ada County is very interested in, Ada County Boys and Girls Club is very interested in partnering with us. Um, they've given us kind of what that, that fundraising amount needs to be for them to, you know, to service at least 100 students. If, and that would, we looked at 50, 80, and 100 students. And so we have those numbers. We just have to sit down and make some decisions. You know, can we, can, as a community, can we fundraise 
for 100 students at 80,000 a year, you know, to, to provide services here. So, um, and then the community schools grant opportunities if we move forward. So, just some of the things we've been talking about um, as we move forward. We don't have all the answers, but we have a lot of things to kind of put together. So, questions? Classified personnel. Or is there going to make some adjustments in, in their hours or usage? Absolutely. Well, if you I think mean, I, I just feel that should be an a, a item that we should bring right. up. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we're it's a target conversation. Yeah. So, yeah. Got it. And <clears throat> my question was when you, you talked about we with the Boys and Girls Club of uh, Ada County, is, is that a committee? Is that administrators? Who's who's involved in that? Discussion? Right now, it's just the community schools, um, which is Amy Burr and myself have had the conversation. We haven't. That, we're just getting started yes. on that conversation. We decided to kind of know now how, what the amount will be, and it's something that we can we use some of. Can we leverage some of the community schools money? Can we do some other things? And so Amy and I are actually meeting tomorrow to kind of talk about some of that um, because the community schools grant. They've got additional money. We may be able to talk to them and say, can you help us to get it started? And, you know, as a startup, so there may be additional funds we can pull from them. And so we've got a lot of conversation going on. Okay. Because they'll want to use facilities, too. So what rooms can we dedicate and where will it be housed? And are we going to bus kids from Shadow Butte down to Carberry or, you know, vice versa? Are we going to have it in both places? So, you know, for after school. So, okay. okay. Any further discussion on that one? Uh, if not, we'll move on to uh, contract negotiations date. What about uh, athletics and activities? Oh, I skipped one. Let's um, go back to E. <laughs> we've talked a lot about this, and I just want to thank Mark Weeks and Ashley Holt. They've gone through um, the alignment athletic handbook, and this is just a, basically what we've asked for vertical alignment and curriculum. We want it in athletics, and so I just wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to, to kind of look at it, add information to it if there's something you don't like and dislike. But the, but the idea behind it is when we hire a coach in any level, they know, okay, this these are the expectations to coach it in, whether it be a middle school coach, whether it be a junior junior varsity coach or freshman coach, these are our expectations, 6 through 12. I know Greg and his team would like to have also have they, – they were part of it because they want to use that some of that down at, at their level as well. So um, they've talked a little bit about that. So this is the book. Mark and Ashley have gone through, they've added quite a few different things, um, our two ADs, and just kind of walk through this whole process. It's, it's, and then we also had head coaches involved with it as well. We invited everybody in, we went through the process, we had a couple different meetings, and that's where we're at. Yeah, appreciate you guys doing that. Any, any questions on that one? Discussion? No, I, I went through it and I, I was impressed with the work that's, that's involved, that has happened and came. I, Probably just been unaware, but I have never seen a district athletic handbook before. So I was impressed. We kind of built this from scratch. So thank you. I think we'll see some good results from that as years progress. So thank you for doing that. All right. So now we can move on contract and negotiation state. So we've had a couple of just um, informal discussions with the GCA when we asked them, we met last week. We'd like to have our first um official contract negotiations, which is a public hearing, which um, on April 24th, 4.30 to 6 p.m. here. Um, Mr. Jones has been sitting on that, just kind of sitting through the informal discussions. And so if uh, the board would like another member to sit there, that'd be great. But if um, we'd, we'd love to have you, but that's when we'd like to start this uh, negotiations for this next year. Okay. Sounds good. Anybody else want to volunteer to come on that day? You're more than welcome to. Just make sure we if we have more than two that we yeah, uh, that I know. notice a quorum. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, that puts us on to action items. Approve or deny the 24-25 budget hearing date. That was Crystal's question earlier. So typically we've had the budget hearing the same day as the, the meeting, which would be June 10th. Um, that fits within the calendar dates. So um, my recommendation would be to have it at 4 p.m. on June 10th. Gives us two hours to review it to the public. Um, we can have a review session for the board ahead of that if you'd like so that you can come in or you can be at that meeting and then uh, from there. So June 10th is a recommendation. Any discussion on that? that work for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Terry, Janet. All right. 
Uh, all in favor? Well, actually, I need a motion. <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, follow the, the recommendation of uh, our, our superintendent that have it on June 10th at 4. At 4. Thank you. Good, and we got a second from Ms. Hines. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, approve or deny the 24-25 calendar updates. Uh, a couple updates are really not a part of the calendar, but we had on the initial one, we had the 6th and 7th for, for brand new staff in the district. Um, we'd like to move that, those two days to the, uh, well, we had them on the 8th and 9th, I'm sorry, but we want to move them to the 6th and the 7th. So that's anybody that's new to the district will be here. Any certified staff will come on those two days. And then we have all of our all of our certified staff coming in on the 8th and the 9th. These are outside of our typical contract. Okay, these are the ones that are going to be paid through uh, the ESSER stipend that we that you approved last month, the transition to the four-day. So there's no changes to our start date. Um, we had actually discussed moving spring break from this week, the 24th through the 28th, up to the 17th through the 21st. But when speaking with the GCA, and this, this aligns with Boise and West Adas, but the 24th through the 28th aligns more with the SIC schools that we compete against. So the GCA and, and we chose to keep it there. So there's no change there. Okay. The, um, the biggest difference is, and I kind of put it, put some bulleted points here. Um, we're looking at a bell schedule change for the middle school, which we, means what we would do is our secondary students, which includes the middle school, would, would go to school. Or they ride the bus just like we normally would in the morning. Then we'd pick up our elementary, we'd drop uh, uh, elementary off. But in the afternoon, we would pick up the middle school at 309. So we're going to shorten their day. Okay. And the middle school would be picked up. The elementary, then they would go to the elementaries and pick up elementary. So our K-8 would be on the same bus. So the contract chain or the, the difference is K-8 staff will be on the uh, on 150 day student contact where the secondary will be on a 148, okay? So that's the biggest difference. The time is that the adjustment from 1,032 hours for middle school down to 1,002. The, the elementary go up from 930 to 937 because we had three minutes to their day. Their day would be, instead of 312, they would be out at 315, okay? Um, changes K-8 students. That, that puts all of our students on the K-8 on the same bus with the exception of Black Canyon students, they'll they'll ride. They'll they'll be on the middle school schedule. There's about eight, well, twelve kids that are in the Black Canyon alternative school. They'll stay on the same schedule. Um, then the last thing we added this today, just so you're aware, secondary open house for parents will be August 14th, and elementary open house will be August 5th. So just <laughs> and we'll we'll put that on the calendars. But it's just those basic edit changes is what we would suggest. Okay. The board. Yeah. Any questions on that? If not, can we get a motion to approve the calendar updates as presented? Motion to approve the 2024-2025 calendar updates. Thank you. Can we get a second? Excuse me. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, approve or deny the request for a quote on the EHS football field improvements. So we posted request for qualifications out um, for two weeks. We had a, a few that were interested. Um, you have in front of you a proposal from Wright Brothers Construction. Um, and that was the only one that we're, was looking at both the design build process and for either sod and or turf. Um, and then we received a local um, a request that if we do go with sod for them to consider, which was uh, Matt Brown as an existing sod. Um, and I asked Mr. Kimball as a representative from Wright Brothers Construction to come here if he had any questions about what a design build took place or what the process we were looking for. Um, but my recommendation would be to hire Wright Brothers Construction on the design portion of design build portion of this project. Mr. Chair, can I, okay, so with that then, is there, we don't have a number as far as like, to compare anything versus sod versus um, turf yet. That'll be their, that's their, that's their job. And Mike okay, can kind so. of explain this, but the design build would be they, their team will come in and, and Mike, you, if, you, if you don't mind stepping up and talking yeah. about it, that'd be great because he knows it better than I do, but you can explain the process. Trustees, most of you guys know Mike Kimball. Uh, 
So yeah, so it's RFQ was for the design build process for turf or sod, right? So primarily was targeting towards the turf side of things. So out of the gate, we will go in um, on the design build contract. The design takes off first uh, portion of the contract. So we'll go through, we'll design the field for both conditions, turf or sod. You can go back and forth either direction, depending on how the district funds. As we go through that process, when we start the design, we'll start our preliminary budgets of what it's going to cost. Because this is going to be a pretty rapid moving thing, so we can have practice in there in August. August 8th. August 8th, right. So as we go through that, we'll be giving Mr. Woods to fund you guys the ideas of the budget of where we're coming in cost-wise for the turf. And if the turf is not an option, then we can switch it back to the sod portion of that. So. So, so you're hiring the team to do the design, and then if you guys back out, it, it, we say nope, we want to go from turf to um, or sod, then that's the direction they go. Or if you want to table and postpone it to next year, it can be done as well. So. Yeah. And the only risk to that is for the district wise is under that side is if you guys decide to back away, you're only paying us for our time in the design. That so if it doesn't come in financially, whatever the case may be, it's just the design of that. One ask that I've got is if you're doing that, could we? And I don't know if this needs to come more from the district than you, but it'd be nice to see. Hey, we assume saw is going to be significantly cheaper, but can we get an idea over the useful life of that turf what the cost savings is that we're not mowing, we're not painting, we're not? Yeah, painting. we can look at that. So, with the the take the years, the turf, you know, I'm sure they whichever they have different lifespans 20 or 30 or turfs whatever then we can take that across whatever your uh costs are for mowing and maintenance and stuff water and, and all that yeah all that <coughs> so just kind so of we have a ballpark mm -hmm. cost yep yeah. any other questions from Mr. Well, that's really what i want to know yeah yeah what, what it's going to cost you and that's i think it's an easy calculation i mean other than you know your general maintenance of how many sprinkler heads are you going to have to replace or sprinkler pipes that's kind of a, a guess if you're driving streaks but at the same time you can kind of get an idea this is a ballpark range but you know how much your labor is to mow and fuel and everything like that yep. Paint yeah. lines. like if if we went to turf and we get down the road 10, 12, 15 years, and we say, you know, this just isn't working for us. Is is there a big changeover to go back to, to uh, sod? Is that a big expense? or is... um, The soil underneath would have to probably be replaced. So, yeah, I would say it's probably a big deal. But, I mean, I don't foresee that to be the case of what you're asking, Mr. Jones. I mean, colleges across the country and – Pro football folks always stick to turf just from that maintenance, the book, everything. So from a benefit, I think it's... If it so you're saying that's, right. that's the norm now, it's the turf? Correct. Okay. And it, it comes in all variety of colors? You can pick your color. If you want blue filled, we'll put your blue filled in there. I, I would prefer a, a hosting colored field. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, to send in zone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you can, yeah, when it's yeah, down can't you can pick just straight up green, green one, pick whatever color you want, right? Gotcha. All right. So, yeah. Mr. Parks has a comment for us. Well, and I was just going to say that, you know, right now that field is used ex exclusively for football. Yeah. But we can paint soccer lines on it. Lacrosse. We can have lacrosse lines on Rugby. it. I mean, All of it. it can be used by a lot of different programs Rugby. rather than just yeah. our football teams. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't. I didn't know that, Mr. Chair. I do have a question. So, right if now. we're fortunate enough to be able to go to to turf, are we look? What are we looking at? Like doing it in end zones? Are they just going to be playing, or are we going to paint a husky in it, or have we just got that far? Have we decided? What I mean, what, in my what, mind, I'm thinking either Emmett on one side and huskies on the other, or huskies on both ends. Yeah. So you are thinking something, not just plain yeah, end zones. I think there's a lot of different people that will need to involve in that type of decision. I mean, that's because this, this is all going to have to go into this decision, right? Because yeah. that's just going to up the cost a little bit, I'm sure. But. Uh, question. How are you going to protect the track around it if all that equipment's going to get on and off the field? Maybe that's a 
that's all well, we could cheat over that real easily just with steel plates and everything else to get over it, bridge it over the top. To protect it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, one more. Yeah. One of the other things is, is that most of the schools that have artificial turf, their facilities are, they're locked up. It's not like Ronnie and his kids can come down on, on Saturday and have a game of pickup football because I mean, you've got so much invested in this that you need to protect it. So I mean, that's another thing you need to think about because um, in our small town, that happens. I mean, people yeah. come down and play on the football field. And I don't think you should, you're, you're probably going to want to allow that if we spend a million or whatever it is on artificial turf. I'll be honest with you, I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> What's that? I really hadn't thought about that point. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Mr. Kimball? In that case, I need a motion to uh, approve the RFQ. Yeah, I'll move to approve the RFQ for EHS football field improvements. I'll second it. Second, Mr. Weeks. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, moving on, approve or deny the Shadow Butte roof project. Chairman, part of our levy um, that we are moving into our second year was the um, roof at Shadow Butte. <coughs> and for some reason, I can't get it. Let's see if I get built. Um, here are the construction. Here's what we had for um, submissions we had six longer construction. Uh, was 257 swagger uh, roofing was 493 weather tight roofing was 250 uh cano roofing was, was 204 upson roofing was 380 western roofing incorporated was 428 um, designs west went through made sure that all the um, information was um, accurate they all have all the licenses and insurance requ uh, requested um, what you have over here is add alternates this is to add Number one is gutters um, on the front portion of the building. So each of the number ones is just a gutter add alternate. And then number two is the um, pump house that's up there. Um, it is a, it's a different type of roof. What's the name? PPO. PPO roof PPO. on that. And so the low bid, which that was qualifying, is this one here at 204. Um, my recommendation that would be that we complete the project with um, signature ripping or cano ripping and the number two add alternate, which is the pump house roof that's up there as well. So those two, which would be about a $2, $210,000, dollars $211,000 project for Shadow View. So Carberry was 253 last year. So, but it is a smaller building up there. So. Okay. It, would it would it not be a good idea then to add the gutters as well? Well, for the, the gutters, twenty five thousand dollars a lot of money for the uh, hundred and some odd feet of gutters. It's not a lot of gutter. We can okay. paint them, and then they even said we can paint those um, ch cheaper. Okay. So, so they're they're in good shape. They and they just need to be kind of painted up, updated. Okay. They're All faded. Right. So. Are you, any questions on the roofing project, Mr. Jones? You know. I, I look at this and, and it confused me. You get uh, somebody like uh, we're talking about at two hundred four thousand and uh, two hundred fifty thousand four hundred ninety. What are they doing differently to make the cost so radically different? I mean, uh, is this signature roofing a reputable company? I mean, do they know what they're doing? Have we used them before? We haven't used them, but is um, but. Designs West looks into all that. They meet all the qualifications to do the projects. They're currently doing a couple of the schools in Caldwell School District. Um, they were the second or they were the second bid out last year with Wright Brothers, I believe. Um, they were, up, I think, about 10000 over what we um, bid out last year. So, um, again, in, there's pros and cons. Do, we, do I know exactly how good a roofing they do? No. But Designs West has gone through, and, and they meet all the qualifications. We can't disqualify. Okay. okay. Well, my curiosity was, and I just don't want to shortchange it. I mean, 
the warranty is for the same, regardless of what the, the cost is. The specs, the yeah, specs are identical to what we had at um, Carberry. Okay. So Mr. Chair, Mr. Jones, if it makes you feel any better, I had the same exact thought. I'm trying to figure out how they can beat forty-six thousand dollars under the next closest person. That's that's quite a discrepancy. Yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming that the the two highest ones they didn't really care whether they got it or not, so they just. Yeah, or three higher ones, so I'm assuming yeah. that they didn't really care. So those that are com in competitive nature there, that's a lot of money discrepancy. Yeah. I wonder, uh, do we come under some regulation as to what they pay their, their uh, labor? You know, like, uh, like the counties or the Bacon. states? They no, got... This isn't coming from master funds so, um, or federal funds, so it wouldn't be under Davis-Bacon. Okay. Very good. Well, Good questions. Uh, any other questions? If not, could we get a motion to approve Cano roofing or signature roofing uh, with the at alternate number two? I'll make a motion that we move forward with Cano roofing and signature roofing um, on the Shadow View roof with add alternate number two of $6,300. Thank you, Mr. Weeks. Can we get a second on that? Second. Second by Mr. Buck. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I have a question. Go ahead. When when will this one be completed? This July be or August? Well, before school. first, yeah. So they can't start on it till the school's out. Right. Um, yeah. But it will complete, be completed during the summer. Yes, it has to be completed over the summer. Yeah. Very good. Uh, next item: approve, deny new hires, transfers, resignations, and change of job status. Release from contract. Mr. Chairman, you have the list. These are um, our resignations. We have a instructor coach at the middle school. School nurse at um, Shadow Butte, Ashley Hole, our athletic director, transfers into positions here. Our, um, from within our buildings, you see Mr. Nigro is going to move from the VP um, to teacher on special assignment at the high school. Um, and then we have new hires, um, Angela at the fourth grade at Shadow Butte, and kindergarten, third, all the way down through. So those are our new hires for this year so far. Huh? Any questions or comments there? Is our AD leaving the district, or is she who? the AD? Is she leaving the district? Yes, she district? took a uh, she took a math position at Eagle High School, and also the head volleyball coach. Oh, so I believe AD um, interviews are tomorrow. Are. Instructional coaches interviews are tomorrow, and then we'll open up the VP position at the middle school probably tomorrow as well. Uh, have you opened up the the uh, director athletic director's position tomorrow? Interviewing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Yep. Any other questions? If not, can we get a motion to approve the new hire transfers, resignations, and change of job status? I make a motion that we approve the new hire uh, classification. Okay. Motion by Mr. Jones. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Science. Uh, any further discussion on that? I just have a crazy question, and maybe it's inappropriate, but I'm just curious. Uh, we got Jaggy and Jaggy. Are they? Brother and sister. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. I believe. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. That was just curiosity. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. We have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So now we are to uh, board member input for future agenda items. Mr. Jones had the one regarding what are we going to do with our was our classified hires? Mm -hmm. And we want that just on a four day week. Yeah. Curious. Mr. Jones, I know you've asked for um, counselors. Um, no, he's gonna have to get that kind of put together. But we got it on the we got it on the list. I I know you're thinking about it. You know, one thing I'd like to to kind of get an idea of is what does it cost for uh, technology uh, in in our district? You know, um, like uh, what is it, uh, Fat Bean, and, and those kinds of services. What what do we spend collectively? Uh, you know, if we get that number, then we can figure out how much per child we're or spending, but it would be just kind of nice because it comes disoriented through the billing process. You know, one this month, one next month, or so forth. And I'd kind of like to know where we're at with that technology bill. Okay. Okay. We got that one as well. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, future agenda items you guys want to talk about? Yeah, I think the baseball team needs to come and give us an update of their trip. Okay. And that's that's on me. I spoke with. <laughs> white, but I forgot to give 
Taylor about coming to tonight. So I said, hey, I think the board would like to hear from you. And, mm-hmm. and that was on me. I didn't, I didn't know Coach Nichols. Yeah. Newsletter? Did you read about it in the newsletter? Oh, yeah. They they had some. Yeah. Some what? I, I just read some about it somewhere, and I yeah. couldn't remember where. I read about it on Facebook and different things. Good deal. So we have the baseball team. Any other? All right. If not, could we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second, don't Second by Mr. Weeks. All in favor, say aye. 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 Is that a record? Goodness. <laughs> National championship. Yeah. Nice. Thank you.